Hello, my name is Sarah and welcome to my knitting podcast. I'm recording this on a very rainy, cloudy day in Edinburgh and it's my last day here before I go back to the States just for about two months. Um, but I've done quite a bit of knitting, so I'll just show you. I don't have any finished objects today, but I've been working on my two jumpers and a pair of socks and it's been a mixed bag. I'll start with the big project because that's probably the most exciting one. So <laughs> here's my wave sweater. Um, I ended up doing a mashup of two different patterns, the wave sweater and the doppio sweater. Um, and I'm knitting this in Neutrogen and easier alpaca one held together. And here it is. I've shown you this many times before at this point. My background color is the light green Neutrogen. I think it's called Grod. And then, did I say background? The, that's, yeah, that's the background. And then the wiggle foreground color is a mixture of three different colors of Neutrogen, but over the span of about a year. Um, Botaniska is the sort of mm, greeny muted teal. Skostra is the dark green and then Val is this medium blue and also my favorite color out of the group. Um, so yeah, I've been, I'm onto the sleeves. This jumper is a present for my dad. Um, and I think he's figured out that it's a present for him because I keep asking him to try it on so that I can get the length of the body right and the length of the sleeves. And I've told him that I'm just getting him to try it on for no reason so that I can use the measuring tape. But I think he's figured it out. So that's kind of exciting, but it's not finished and I'm leaving back to America tomorrow. So I think that this is going to need to stay here and I'll just finish it when I get back here in June. It kind of kills me to do that, but I don't really want to lug it all the way back and the yarn to finish it. And it's not like it's going to get anywhere in the summer in the States anyway by my dad. So that's my plan, although it, it hurts to, <laughs> to know that I'll be leaving this when it's really close to being done. But, um, you know, it's okay. I have about an inch left on the longer sleeve to knit, and then the shorter sleeve, I just need to match to the longer sleeve. I think I'm about here. So that's where the shorter sleeve is. Um, I, I really enjoyed knitting the yoke of this jumper. And I enjoyed the parts where I was figuring out what I was doing and seeing how the colors were sort of playing together. And I kind of stopped enjoying working on it. Definitely at the sleeves, maybe even before. Um, but I think it's gonna be a great jumper. And I, I do want to get this finished as soon as I get back. I didn't buy the pattern. Have I been calling it the loop sweater? I don't know why I keep doing that. It's the wave sweater. Um, I, didn't, I haven't bought that pattern, but I've been working off of the doppio pattern, um, which has this um, raglan shaping. And um, my gauge is actually a little bit too small. So I'm making, I was going to make the 49 size. I'm not sure exactly, but the size just under the 50 mark. But then when I was casting on, I was just a little bit too short to cast on the stitches. So I ended up going one size down from that and my gauge is a little bit smaller. So it's not the size, it's smaller than I originally had intended for it to be, um, but that's fine. It works really well. And I've made it lengthwise to my dad's exact measurements, but I'll put it on and show you how it looks. So here it is on me. Um, it's definitely longer than I would normally knit a jumper for myself, but it fits perfectly in my dad, so that's why the length is the length. And it's very, very thick. I used four millimeter needles, 
which is the tightest gauge I've ever done on a garment with knitted in. And um, I think this is gonna be extremely warm. You can see that the um, sleeve yoke is a little bit long. My armpit is here. But when for men's sort of men, traditionally men's shaping, the yoke depth is often a little bit deeper anyway. Um, so it works quite well. And I did, I think I had mentioned this in my last video, I did fix the neck, which was sort of peeling over. So now it just stands straight up and I think it looks really good. I did corrugated ribbing at the neck and at the um, body ribbing. And I, I can't do that on the sleeves because I'm about run out of this light green color. I have enough to do the other sleeve as long as this one, plus maybe another six rows which will take me to the sleeve ribbing. So that's really good. But um, I don't have enough to do the sleeve ribbing with the light green. So I think I'll do the sleeve ribbing in one of these contrast colors. I'm actually also out of this blue. So in the two green contrast colors and that'll be okay. Ideally, I would like to have it in the light green, but I, I don't think it will take away from the way that the jumper looks. Um, and I've enjoyed working off of the dopio pattern. I definitely have made some mistakes in the increases because this is, this wave point is centered to the neck. Um, but yet uh, the underside of this arm lined up perfectly for the body. But the underside of this arm did it. I didn't really care enough to go back and fix it because it's under the arms and it's, you know, really annoying to unravel. But um, I think I must have missed, like messed up a significant number of the increases because it should be the same on both sides. Um, but also, in, interestingly, the armpit of the side that has this Flew, worked out color work wise perfectly with the sleeve underarm stitches so I could just continue that but then on the side where the pattern the chart is complete it didn't match up so life is a mystery if I sat down, had sat down and thought about it maybe um I could have figured out all of that stuff but that's okay I don't really I don't feel bothered by it at all. Um, it's nice and cozy. I think that maybe the last knitted in jumper in, of this style, because I have yarn for one more, will be maybe for me. I would make one for my other dad, but I don't think he likes colorful clothes. He wears quite uh, dark colors. So I don't really have dark colors. So maybe the last one will be for me. Who knows? I have this much left. Um, I'll put it down. It's mostly the plum color that I bought that I have left, even though I've already made a whole jumper after that. Um, and then quite a lot of like yellowy warm tones, but it's hard to describe like cool warm tones, like yellow and orange that have a lot of green in them. Um, but, and I think that that will make a really nice jumper the next time I get around to, or probably next winter when I next feel like knitting, like a big cozy jumper. So pretty exciting. I love this. I think that it looks really deliberate, despite just being sort of a combination of wool that I had in stash. And I think that my dad is going to love it when I give it to him, which will probably be at the end of the summer. Um, his birthday isn't till December. And I don't want to wait till then. There's not really another occasion to give it to him. So I might just tell him it's an early birthday present, but then give it to him like at the start of the cold weather. So 
Yeah, I um, I just have the same color of the Uzair for the background. It matches Botaniska very well, but the others it doesn't really match. But I, I really don't think that it is noticeable. So yes, that's the progress I've made on this. I wish I'd been able to get it finished before I leave tomorrow. I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish it tonight, but, um, but that's okay. Not everything um, works out perfectly, and I'll be back in just about two months anyway. So yeah, you'll see this again when it's done, which will not be in the next episode, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm going to take this off, put my other jumper back on now. Oh, it might be fun to show you my floats and what it looks like on the inside. It's really cool on the inside. I might like the inside better than the outside. Um, I haven't woven in any ends. With the Nugeton, that's not a problem, but it's just there's a couple like little alpaca ends poking out. Um, so when I finish this, I will give it a wash before I give it to my dad. Not to block it, really, because it, nothing much here is going to change, but I want to give it a wash inside out just to felt a little bit all of these floats. I haven't caught any floats on the body, but on the sleeves, I have been catching my floats in these sections. Um, just because I thought there's like fingers and stuff in sleeves. So I want to try and make it a little bit sturdier before I hand it over. Um, but that is a bridge I will get to, well I'll cross when I get to. But the inside just looks really great as well. And I think I showed this in my um, last video, but for the short rows at the back, I just made the wave design longer. Um, to accommodate for the short rows instead of adding an extra one in or instead of just having it be green, light green. So yeah, that's my wave sweater. It's going to go on a bit of hiatus. I haven't worn this jumper that I'm currently wearing on my podcast in a while. It's the Helix Pullover by Jessie Made Designs. And I made, I think, the extra large size. It's a drop shoulder design um, with this all over lace pattern. Um, and I used Camaro's, a linen from Camaro's which I don't really recommend, but it is a very nice finished object. It was just a total nightmare to knit with because it was a chainette, um, chainette yarn in linen. So whenever one of the little stitches on the chainette was snagged, well, they snagged often, and then they didn't go back into the yarn because it didn't have any elasticity. So it ended up looking prematurely scruffy before it was even done. But in general, it's a very sort of beachy look. And yeah, I think it's pretty nice. I tested this. I think that there's some people who it's really their style and they'll really love it. And the fabric is very nice for mine. It's not really something I wear very often, but maybe in the summer I'll wear it more. Never know. My next project is one that I am the most excited about this episode, and it's the Yanni sweater jumper by Orlan Souk. I think that it's done in collaboration with Bichet Bouche because the original, is this right? I think so. I think the original is knit in Bichet Bouche Le Gros Mohair. 
Um, so it's sort of collaboration. I'm knitting it in Whistlebear, Cheviot Marsh, Iron Weight. In the colors Longitude and All at Sea. Um, and I'm doing two row stripes. So let me show you. I've got it on a cord. So <laughs> here's what I've got so far. And this has had a, quite a two weeks. It's been getting the majority of my attention, although I really should have just knit the sleeves on my knitted and jumper instead of working on this. But you know, it's about having a good time. Um, it is a pattern, it's like a saddle shoulder slash contiguous style jumper with a very deep yoke and a lot of positive ease. And um, it's knit top down as you can see um, on five millimeter needles. And I'm about 12 rows away from the end of the yoke which is kind of a lot. That's four, no it's not, that's three stripes. So that's about this much. So that's about this much left to go. So that's like an inch and a half. And it's already quite a deep yoke. It doesn't have the neckline on it yet, but that will get added on eventually. Um, and I made a huge mistake with this whip and I have now spent hours and hours trying to fix it. The, um, basically these saddle shoulders, um, which sort of turn, transform into raglan seams. Are they still raglan seams if they start out with saddle shoulders? Don't know. The, the shoulder increases change rates um, at different times throughout the yoke. So up to here, it's a certain rate, and then up to here, it's a certain rate, and then up to here. Um, but I misread, and the last one is the longest one. I think I, I my, for my size, I needed to do the final four row repeat 10 times. And this one, it's a really big yoke, so it takes a really long time for each repeat. And I realized just three repeats from the end, so I'd done seven, that I had misread the pattern and I was increasing where, I was increasing on the body where I should have been increasing on the sleeve and increasing on the sleeve where I should have been increasing on the body. And I had done that for 28 rows and it was taking me about 15 minutes to knit each row. So I was horrified. Um, I, yeah, I just didn't want to rip it back, but I thought, you know, I will if I need to. So I thought I would try and drop down the whole um, increase seam for each quarter and see if I could pick back up the stitches in a different order with a different, um, sort of increase split between the sleeve and the body. Um, and if that didn't work, I would just unravel the 28 rows and start again, um, that section. So I did that and I've done two of the seams. I fixed two of them. I say seam, I mean like the increase point. Um, so I can show you which ones I've fixed and which ones I haven't. This one I haven't, so here. On this side, you can see that the body is increasing at twice the rate of the sleeve. And then on this one, you can see starting from where that safety pin is that the sleeve is increasing instead. So I fixed this one. It actually looks pretty good. Considering I dropped down this huge wedge of stitches, I'll insert a photo, and I um, picked them all up very carefully and, and tried to get the tension right across the whole thing. Um, it took me about three hours to do the first one, and then the second one took me about two hours. But the first one I did was the 
was the increase where I changed color. So I also had to take into account getting this right when I picked all that up. It actually looks really good. Um, cause I, I had undone all of these stitches and yeah, I think I did a pretty good job. I'm glad that I had a deliberate, because this seam was in the middle of all of the stitches that I was, I moved around. Um, I'm glad that I did the same thing for every stripe color change. I wouldn't have been able to go back and fix it if I hadn't done that. So I'm really glad that I did that. And it's gonna be a long road to fix the other two seams as well. But I will do it because I love this project. Um, so that was a big roadblock that I encountered this past week when I realized, because I went back to just double check, I was so upset. Especially because I had been working on this project, like I felt like I couldn't help it. I just was enjoying it so much to the point where I was neglecting other projects I had been really wanting to finish. Um, and then I realized that I had made this big mistake. And I don't remember the last time I made such a big mistake in a knitting project. Um, so it just happens, I guess. Now it'll probably be a while before I make another mistake like this because I'm gonna be worried about it and pay special attention. I do have a little bit of um, increased tension weirdness, especially in this first area. I'm hoping that that will block out. And if not, I'm hoping that it won't be as noticeable when it's worn on a 3D item, AKA my body. Um, so, yeah, I haven't been working on this so much because I've been working on my wave sweater and because I got to the end of both of my first skeins of yarn for this project and I didn't really feel like a hand winding another two skeins when if I wait 48 hours, I can put them on my Swift and crank them in Philadelphia. Yeah, I have been really enjoying knitting it so far. I Part of me has been enjoying the challenge of fixing my problem. And I, I don't, I think that most of the interest is in the yoke and the shaping. And since it's such a low, a deep yoke, I think that there's actually not a huge amount of sleeve and body to knit when it's done. Although I will be not cropping this one. And I'm pretty sure that I will have enough yarn. This is one th third of the yarn that I have. So I think that I will have enough. I've never made a pattern by Orlan Souk before and I'm enjoying it. And I love my stripes. I think that they're so nice. I was knitting on this in the cinema, which I've never done before. I didn't really know that I could knit without looking because I'd never tried. I'm not one of those people who can read and knit. I spend a lot of time reading and I love to read, um, but I couldn't read and knit at the same time. I need to, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. But, um, but I really enjoyed taking this to the cinema. I was knitting, throwing style instead of picking. Which one is that? Is that English style or is that continental? I don't know. Normally I have the working yarn in my left hand and I just pick the stitches. I think that's continental. I don't know, sorry. Um, but yeah, I switched to throwing to be able to do it in the cinema and I I did it, it was good. I knit one and a half repeats watching a film. I saw A Perfect Day, which is about a man who is a toilet cleaner in Tokyo. And it was really nice. I'm not much of a, like a film person. Um, I don't see a lot of movies, especially like uh, fancy movies, you know, like intellectual films. 
not that this was particularly intellectual, but um, I'm more of a book person generally, but I really enjoyed this one and it makes me want to go see more films. And now that I know I can knit, um, if I want to, I will probably bring some knitting to it. It was a little bit hard in the darker blue sections because I couldn't, I really couldn't see what was happening if I needed to look to fix something. But um, it's not that big of a deal. And this project I am going to take back to the States with me um, to work on. I'm just not taking the Nudidin project because all of my Nudidin is here and because it's quite heavy since it's almost done. And I would just need to bring it back here to give to my dad here anyway. Um, so that seemed a little bit silly to take over to America to knit like two sleeve cuffs worth of knitting. Um, but this one I'm bringing, and it's in this bag goo bag, little pouch. My last project is an, my Erica sock. It's not done, but I've done the leg almost. Here's the first one. I'll spread it out so that you can see what the... The lace looks like it's like sort of a leaf design. And it's got an eye of partridge heel flap and a gusset. It's a bit hard to see when it's not on a foot because the lace pattern has pearl stitches around it. So it kind of caves in on itself, but it's beautiful on the foot and on my hand. Um, I did a the pattern is from 52 Weeks of Socks by Lina. I've been working on this for a couple weeks. It's a really nice project just to pick up and knit a few rows. I have the chart memorized, so I don't need to worry about pulling the chart up. And I love this yarn. It's a this dark forest green from Sugar Plum Circus in their sock base. I think that it's 25% nylon, 75% merino. And I'm knitting it on Magic Loop 2.25 millimeter needles. And I'm making the bigger size, which has a cast on of 68 stitches. Um, I used a slip stitch cast on, which is my favorite cast on because it's really stretchy, but it doesn't flare. And um, I brought this with me this weekend. I was at a Hindu or a bachelorette trip for my oldest friend, which was in Berlin, and I didn't have a very good time. It's not Berlin's fault. I would love to go again and see the city properly, but I think it's just not really my sort of event. I don't really have enough energy or desire to be rowdy and I didn't really know anyone there and felt a bit, I don't know, a bit distant from everyone, I guess. And um, yeah, I was really low energy because I recently had surgery, I think that was why. So it wasn't, I was just very tired the whole time. Um, but I brought this sock on that trip and I barely got any knitting done because every time I sat down, I just wanted to sit and zone out and be quiet and not do anything. Um, and then I worked on it on the airplane. So, but I am almost at the end of the leg. This is going to be finished really fast when I put some time into it. And I've been really enjoying working on it too. The color is just gorgeous um, as well. So I'm looking forward to having these as a finished object. And I think that they would make great gifts. I would totally recommend this pattern out of the Lina book. And I'm just knitting through that book, I guess. Not like every pattern, but I've made five now. So good stuff. It's all good stuff. I haven't bought any yarn in the past two weeks. And I haven't really been tempted to buy yarn, which is nice. 
I have just, just been feeling very excited about what I'm currently knitting on and also excited to get back to the States and to see my boyfriend and my cat and continue recovering from surgery. It's all still going well. Um, I had breast reduction surgery, so that's, everything seems to be going well as far as I can tell, although I'm really sore after going on that trip. Um, hopefully that will just get better over the next couple of days. I think I overdid it and didn't really have adequate time or space to rest. So I think a few days of good, a few good nights of sleep and quiet days will be good. Although I am flying back to America tomorrow, but when I get there, I've got some time to rest as well. I'm a little bit sad to be leaving Edinburgh, even though it's only for two months, but all good things come to an end, I guess. And there's definitely a lot of really good things waiting for me in Philly. So it's both a little bit of sadness and a lot of excitement. Um, and my parents are coming over to America with me because my Scottish dad just got his green card after many years of waiting in the process. So they'll be over there for a pretty significant amount of time. And I'm very much looking forward to spending more time with them in the States as we'll all be there together. So they're not gonna be based in Philly, they'll probably be in New York, but it's a really easy and short train ride to um, go between the cities. I think that on the plane, I'm going to work on my sock and maybe, oh, I didn't mention this, but I have also been working on a test knit. It's a cardigan. Um, it's gonna be in a magazine in the autumn and I'm, it's bottom up. So I've done the body, one sleeve and another half of the sleeve. So I'll probably bring that sleeve onto the plane as well. Cause that is quite a short turnaround and I haven't really worked on it in the past two weeks cause I've been excited about my other projects. Um, and it's due at the end of April. So I have enough time to finish it, definitely, but I do need to get back on it. So I think my plain, those will be my plain projects. And cause I can't really work on the um, Yanni, Yanni pattern anyway until I've wound another two skeins. So that's great. And now I don't have to worry about what I'm gonna knit on the plane cause it's already decided. And I'll bring my book on the plane and you know, all the good stuff that I love airplanes because I get so much like uninterrupted hobby time. So I will cease my rambling. This has been a bit of a shorter video, um, which I think is all good. And I hope that you've had a really good two weeks. I will see you next time. Goodbye.